Same. Different. By the time we're done here, we will connect concepts from the two addressing worlds, IPv4 and IPv6. Now I know, once you learn something well, like TCP IP version 4, it's hard. There's going to be a natural gut level resistance to say, I just don't want to dive into something new. I, I've got this. I've got it. At least that's how I felt. I felt like that for years and I would see IPv6 and I'd be like, well, yeah, okay, I, I, I got the, the yeah, I'll just kind of, you know, shove it in the closet. But one of the things that you'll find is when you learn IPv6 well, you're like, wow, this is really cool. It's, it's almost like you had a, you know, a 2003 car model and all of a sudden it's like, hey, check out what they've added to the 2010 version. You know, it's just like, wow, there's just, it's the same. It's a car, it drives, but there's just some drastic differences that you're like, that's really cool. I, I, I love that upgrade. That's what I'm hoping you're going to fill by the time this skill is done. So I'd like to start here by talking about what's the same and what's different, at least in terms of the two different protocols. IPv4, which powers the vast majority of the world today and ties together the internet as we know it, or IPv6, the up and coming contender and hands down, eventually the ruler of the world in terms of IP addressing. That We all know this is where we're going. It's just how fast are we going to get there? That's the question. So what, what's the same between these two? Well, first and foremost, know that both of these are layer three addressing. We're looking at our networks and we have to build a roadmap of what these networks look like. And we do that by identifying, I guess you could call them the street names, the subnets that we're going to deploy at each one of them. I'll just be lazy right now and give an example, 10.1.2.0, et cetera, et cetera. And we know that in this IPv4 world, we have a limitation of around 4 billion addresses or so. And now, now that's a gross overestimation because we know that, for instance, on the internet, private IP addresses don't work. There's a whole chunk of class D, class D. I mean, there's, there's just all kinds of addresses that we can't use. So we know that we would have a major shortage if we actually had to use all of those. Well, in the IPv6 world, we have addresses that are extraordinarily longer, as in so much longer that I don't want to write them as I'm talking because it, it, would, it would be a mess. But let me, hang on, let me pause. I'll, I'll put an example of one of them right below Arizona. And there. <laughs> oh, subnet mask. There we go, right? So, so this... An IPv4 address limited around 4 billion or so addresses if you take the entire scope. The IPv6 addressing space, there, I mean, there's, there's examples that people give of like you could have one IP address for every atom of the, of the unit. I mean, just it's, it's, it's so absurd how many addresses uh, are out there. I mean, it, just Google and you'll see some of the silly comparisons that they use that people are saying, obviously, whoever created this did not want to run out again. So... The fact is, layer three addressing is the same. We're just assigning addresses to the device, whether it's a short address or a long address, it does the same thing. It identifies that device uniquely on the network. Second is both of these address types have a network and a host portion. So in the IPv4 world, we would, you know, when you're first getting started learning it, you look at the subnet mask and decimal and you look and you go, okay, well, you know, there's our, our network, there's our host, right? The slash 24 is CIDR notation, which is essentially the number of binary ones in the subnet mask. And that tells you the same thing. It's just, you're thinking about it in binary. Well, in the IPv6 world, we only have CIDR notation for the subnet mask. Each one of these, we'll call them hextets, which is what Wikipedia has coined as the unofficial word for each one of these. You remember in IPv4, we called these octets. And the reason why is because oct means eight, eight binary digits. Well, it, hextets doesn't really mean anything. It's just a fun word because we're now using hexadecimal. And each one of these have 16 binary bits that are inside of it. This is how we've moved from a 32 to a 128 bit address. And I, I'm, I'm starting to get into the differences a little bit. I don't, I don't mean to right now, but the main thing I wanted to show you is that the subnet mask does the same thing. It's just when I see a, for instance, slash 24, I would look and I go 16, 32, 48, 64. Okay. Boom, right there. That's where my dividing line goes in. This represents the network. This represents the host. And it functions exactly the same. The hosts still use 
that subnet mask to make decisions. That's how the computer looks and goes, okay, I'm trying to access this address. Is it on my network or off my network? Well, in IPv4, IPv6, it's exactly the same. You're going to say, oh, the first number of bits are exactly the same in this address, so it must be on my network. Or, oh no, they're different, so it must be off my network. I need to go to my default gateway. Those kind of concepts are still the same. The last thing I would say that's, that's primarily the same is they both link to layer four protocols. Remember, IP is just the addressing piece of this. That's it. it. It designs the network. It assigns each device a unique address. But in order to get other functionality like port numbers and what applications are accessing what, it still relies on TCP and UDP. So I want to make sure that you, when you catch, I'm not talking about TCP IPs, everything's changed. It's not. It's still the same thing. It's just we've swapped out the addressing piece of it for something upgraded. So let me clear this off and now talk about what is different. And I couldn't help myself, I bit my tongue. The biggest one is IPv4 uses 32-bit addressing, whereas IPv6 has upgraded that to 128 bits of love. That's the difference between those two addresses I drew up just a minute ago. In the IPv4 world, we use dotted decimal. Meaning when we look at an address, let's just say 10.1.1.5, right? The dots are what separate our sections of bits. In IPv6, we use hexadecimal to where every one of these things, instead of being eight bits, is now 16 bits, as I mentioned just a moment ago, and are separated by sets of colons to where in the end, you actually have eight hextets, each one of them representing 16 bits, where if you multiply eight times 16, that's where our 128 bits come in. In IPv4, we used a subnet mask, which most people just think of that 255.255, essentially the decimal view of the subnet. In IPv6, there is no such thing. Even if you wanted to, you couldn't write the, uh, the subnet mask in decimal because it only uses that CIDR notation, classless interdomain routing, which is essentially the number of bits, I'll just put slash 64 as an example, that is used to represent the network portion of it. The last difference that I think is gonna jump out at you is in IPv4, we're used to saying, that's the device's address. You know, that computer is 10.1.1.5, for example, that's its address. In IPv6, we'll do the same thing, but most of the time we'll be referring to its global address. And that's because in the IPv6 world, every device will have multiple addresses. The global address is the closest one that we have nowadays to say, yes, quote unquote, that's a public IP address. And by the way, that's news for you. In the IPv6 world, everything gets a global address. Everything has a public address. Remember, remember in the IPv4 world, we had private addresses, right? And we do still have private addresses in the IPv6 world, but people are like, ah, do we really need those? Matter of fact, there was a big debate, like let's remove that from the RF, let's let, oh no, no, let's put it back in the state. Like people are fighting and it's still to this day, people fight, do we use private addresses? The, the overwhelming feeling is no, because if you use private addresses, then you're back into the world of NAT, network address translation, which was a band-aid to try and sustain IPv4 even longer. Now in the new world, you won't need NAT anymore, anymore because every device will have a public address. Last thing that I'll say, when you're looking at upgrading your network to IPv4 and IP, from, from IPv4, I should say, to IPv6, the easiest way to do it is something known as an overlay. That is, keep your IPv4 in place. It's no problem, just let it run as it always has and deploy IPv6 on top of it. You can actually have both protocols running at the same time. And the great thing is, is you'll have them going, you'll do your testing, and then you can slowly, but I mean, think about that. You could have one device and yank its IPv4 address and go, okay, is this still working? Is it communicate? DNS work? Is, is it all working? Okay. Oh, no, no, put it back. Right. Okay. Okay. So the way it will work is you overlay IPv6. This is, this is just one of the migration strategies. You could go cold turkey if you wanted to, but primarily it's lay them both on top of each other and then slowly but surely remove that IPv4 to where all that's left is six. That's the foundation. That's connecting the concepts from the two addressing worlds, IPv4 and IPv6. More on this to come. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.